Welcome to TMZ, home of celebrity gossip and lowest common denominator garbage like this video of an iguana farting in a bathtub. And which of these dogs will be the first to date newly out of the closet pansexual Miley Cyrus? But first, TMZ is proud to announce a new partnership with the New York Times. What? Yes, one of the most respected newspapers in the world is coming down to our level. Hey everybody, John Pluskina here. Like a muck-spreading hippo, the mainstream media has been spreading unsubstantiated sexual assault allegations against Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump. But did you notice who wrote the hit piece that started all this in the New York Times? It's a familiar face, our old friend Michael Barbaro, who wrote the first Trump hit piece about sexual harassment allegations, Crossing the Line. Now, within days of the release of that particular shining example of unbiased journalism, a woman quoted in the article, Roanne Lane Brewer, came forward to say that she was misquoted and her entire story was taken out of context. They did take quotes from what I said, and they put a negative connotation, they spun it to where it, it appeared negative. Um, I did not have a negative experience with Donald Trump, mm -hmm. and I don't appreciate them making it look like that I was saying that it was a negative experience. Now, most reporters might be ashamed if something like that happened, but not Michael Barbaro. He doubled down. I think we really stand by our story. Um, we, we believe we quoted her fairly and accurately. Um, I guess he thinks that she misquoted herself. And yet, it turns out that Jessica Leeds, a key accuser from Barbaro's newest hit piece on Trump, may have just had a bone to pick. In 2007, she was quoted in an article in the New York Daily News about a dispute that she was having with Trump over some trees that he planted blocking her view of the ocean and some property that she owned in Florida. She said, We can watch the whales go by, the pelicans go fishing, the kite surfers. It's an idyllic life. And now Donald Trump comes along and takes that away said Jessica Leeds, 62, whose million-dollar property was singled out in Trump paperwork as particularly homely. Now, that's what you might call a conflict of interest. And it turned out that at least one key detail of Jessica Leeds' story didn't check out. She claimed to have met Trump on a particular model of airplane, and that Trump lifted the armrest between their two seats so that he could grope her more effectively. But it turns out that on that particular model of airplane, the armrests in first class don't lift up at all. And a witness came forward who claimed to be on the same plane. And he saw Jessica Leeds and Donald Trump interacting. He said they were flirting and that nothing bad apparently happened. Doing some research so that you could point out potential conflicts of interest, interviewing witnesses and checking out story details is called journalism. And they don't do that at the New York Times. Michael Barbaro is a partisan hack. The New York Times is a partisan hack paper. It's a perfect example of how what some people used to call the mainstream media is quickly losing its relevance and fading away. The only reason why the New York Times is still respected is because of inertia. So out of contempt, I dug up an email address that I could allegedly use to send information to the executive editors of the New York Times. Here's what I decided to send. Dear unbiased journalists, my name is John Pluskina. I've remained silent for years, but thanks to intrepid reporter Michael Barbaro, I've finally found the courage to speak out. In 1991, my parents attended a Clinton campaign event. I was introduced to Hillary Clinton. She offered to take me to meet her husband, but that was just a ruse to get me away from my parents. Once we were alone, she shoved me into an empty broom closet and forced a ball gag into my mouth. She tore my clothes off as she began chanting prayers to Satan. As I lay helpless in her arms, a tiny, innocent child, she began to repeatedly and brutally sexually assault me with a strap-on dildo. This agonizing and humiliating ordeal continued for several hours. After she achieved multiple orgasms, she left me bleeding on the floor alone. She told my parents I fell down the stairs to explain the horrific injuries I sustained. I have just as much evidence to support my claims as Jessica Leeds and Rachel Crooks. So I know you'll be getting back to me soon. 
so that we can get this crucial information out before the election. Now, since I said that, hashtag Hillary Grote me has started to trend on Twitter, and there's now thousands of people essentially making the same joke. So unfortunately, it's probably just going to get lost in the shuffle with all that. But if I hear back from him, I'll let you know. So now everybody's panicking. Republicans are calling Democrats hypocrites because they defended Bill Clinton against similar allegations. And Democrats are calling Republicans hypocrites because they attacked Bill Clinton with similar allegations. Maybe they're both right. Uh, I was still learning to drive when the original Clinton sex scandals happened. I don't remember any of it very well. So I went back and started to do some research to see what I could find. And maybe they are similar situations because it seems like those women came forward after years of silence with no real evidence too. And I don't think I really want to live in a country that chooses its leaders by who has the least credible sexual assault allegations from decades in the past. I think that probably even politicians deserve to be innocent until proven guilty, although Bill Clinton's facial expression when those women walked in the room of the debate was kind of telling, maybe. Maybe that substantiates things just a tiny, tiny bit, but whatever. I think it's probably best if we all just dropped it and let it go. But in any case... It's a harsh world out there, my friends. Keep thinking.